As the 41 trapped workers make their way out of Uttarkashi tunnel where they were stuck for 17 days, we have Lokesh Ohri with us to talk about the narratives of the locals as to how and why such human-made disasters have occurred in mountains time and again. Lokesh is an anthropologist, author and activist based in Himalayas. so uh, the entire landscape of the himalayas is a, as we all know is known as the bhumi it's a sacred landscape and uh, every uh, every settlement every sacred landscape every region where the communities revere the forests respect the forests they are protected by local deities so in this uh, context where the silkara tunnel is located the kshetrapal or the Uh, guardian deity of the area is Boknak, and we have seen uh, we have seen uh, over the over the days that uh, that local people have become more vocal. They have come out more openly to say that because the Boknak shrine was removed from where the tunnel was dug, uh, this calamity has uh, has occurred. uh in fact uh, the small shrine of boknag was installed and later removed and then had to be installed uh again uh, before the rescue operations were started and we've also seen uh, the american experts those pictures in fact in uttarakhand are going viral that the american expert who came with the auger machine uh, mr arnold uh, dix he first bowed before a uh, bhoknag before he entered the tunnel so uh, these deities they are guardian deities for uh, regions and they are known as kshetrapals uh, people revere them and and because of that they keep these uh, landscapes as sacred uh, they protect the forest because it's the forest of the devata it's the forest of the community and the forest of the guardian deity and therefore these forests have uh, remained safe and conserved over centuries uh, and today when we are building indiscriminately across the himalaya we are somehow uh, you know interfering with local faiths because even in the past we have seen in all the major disasters they all have back stories of how the local deities were violated uh, and and caused havoc on the communities so these uh, belief systems they come from local devis and devatas uh, local devis and devatas uh, as i described them are divine kings or divine deities uh, they are uh, they are considered as uh, political masters but they also have divine powers uh, they are usually idols kept in temples but unlike the idols kept in temples in the plains these are traveling deities so people carry them over long distances in in palkis or palanquins and uh, and these are deities who possess uh, uh, certain people who are called pashwas so the pashwas they act as the mouthpieces of these deities and through this intricate system uh, i am oversimplifying this is a very complex and intricate system Uh, that uh, has uh, led to social cohesion in the himalayas so you can see these dev dolis traveling uh, across the himalayas even in himachal pradesh and uh, these deities are considered as uh, as the devatas of quick justice uh, they are the deities that control the weather they are the deities that uh, control uh, disasters and calamities as well so but somehow uh, this indiscriminate construction activities are coming in conflict with the uh, with the deities again and again and uh, but you know it's very difficult to reconcile local beliefs uh, with uh, with uh, what we today describe as rational action and <clears throat> scientific thinking <clears throat> so while the while the people who sit in delhi and the you know the people who determine our policy they think that it is uh, uh it is uh, you know uh, it is important to exploit the resources of the region 
uh, my submission is that we need to also uh, look at local beliefs and beliefs that have conserved these forests and hillsides for, for centuries and, uh, and also somehow understand what local people actually want. Uh, the general feeling at the moment is that uh, you know, the Himalayan resources are being opened up for exploitation uh, for the benefit of city dwellers. If we look at the Chardham Mahamar, now this particular tunnel was also being dug for the uh, all-weather road, which is also known as the Chardham Mahamar. Now the Chardham Mahamar is, uh, you know, it's a it's a construction project which was undertaken by, uh, you know, by the government, keeping aside its own rules for environment impact assessments. Uh, so. But what the government wanted to show in a hurry is that we can we can do this multi-lane highway all the way to the four pilgrimage sites in the Himalayas, and and probably it was done to please the Hindu Hindu uh, you know pilgrims across the country who flock to the Chardham Yatra. Now, while we are trying to do the all-weather road, we have seen that the all-weather road is. Uh, we have not understood the geology. Himalaya is an incredibly complex mountain chain. It's a young mountain chain, and every few hundred meters, the geology completely changes. So we have not understood the geology. We have not understood the rock formations. In the process of opening up the Himalayas through a rail link, through a all-weather road, uh, through all these helicopters, which are which are dropping people onto Shiva in Kedarnath. Uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to convert pilgrimage into tourism. And with that, we are opening up these uh, protected areas to exploitation for their resources. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a terrible situation. And I think this situation will also, you know, uh, it will impact the water security of people who live in the plains. Because two of our major river systems originate from here. Ganga and the Yamuna are, you know, Uttarkashi is, is a transition zone. Is it? it is right between the origins of these two great uh, river systems. So yes, uh, so see if you look at Garhwal Himalayas, the Garhwal Himalayas, they uh, follow, a, a, you know, culture of the Pandava tradition of the Mahabharata tradition. So the people in Garhwal believe they are the descendants of the Pandavas. And, and like you have Ram Leelas in the plains of India, in, in uh, right now in, in Garhwal region, a lot of people are actually dancing the Pandav Leelas. And even in every Pandav Leela, one can hear this, uh, you know, the cry of the people who are also praying for the safety of these uh, laborers who are trapped inside the uh, inside the tunnel. So uh, this is Pandava country, which is Garhwal. And Uttarkashi is a district which is uh, next to the districts of Garhwal. And here we also have local deities which, uh, which are also traveling deities. So uh, these are deities which are more influenced by the culture of Himachal Pradesh, like Mahasu and other deities who are uh, who are constantly being carried from one village to another, from one ridge to another. And uh, and so there, there are minor variations in culture from Garhwal, whereas we are coming closer to the cultures of Himachal Pradesh, uh, where the prevalence of traveling babies is, is very common. So uh, what we are also seeing is that transition from the Ganga watershed to the Yamuna watershed. Uh, that the, in Garhwal, we see the origins of the Ganga. And in Indian culture and in local beliefs, uh, Yamuna is treated as Tamasa, as a dark river. So it's the exact opposite of, uh, of the Ganga. It complements the Ganga in a sense that it is called uh, uh, Karmanasha which destroys merit. Whereas bathing in the Ganga gives you merit, bathing in the Yamuna destroys the merit. So it's, it's a kind of a complementary system. And therefore you can see these subtle changes in culture. 
uh, we have not understood these changes in culture. We have not understood these subtleties. And we've just gone on and blasted uh, hillsides uh, to create these access routes and to, and to make sure that more and more people can get into these areas. Mm, it would be great if government re-examines policy now and, uh, and limits the number of people that can come into this landscape. Otherwise, we, we will have reoccurring disasters one after the other. So, uh, you know, what the average uh, mountain dweller thinks is quite evident from, uh, from the whole problem of migration. So, you know, Uttarakhand is one state which has had to form a migration commission. And we are trying to figure out how to stop migration from the villages. So people are fed up. They are just abandoning their villages uh, because they know that uh, the resources of the Himalayas are now not their resources. They do not have ownership over these resources. These resources will go for what is labeled as the greater common good. Uh, and and uh, they will be, uh, you know, if Delhi needs electricity or if the grid needs more power, we will have more dams. And Constantly, there has been a call for keeping Ganga dam free. Abiral Ganga is what many people have tried to uh, project. But these things have not worked. So uh, we have so many hydroelectric projects. We have uh, so many uh, forest areas which are now being opened up uh, and, and their protection is being taken away. Uh, so it's it's a... It's a situation where the locals feel that they are being alienated from the rest of the country and their beliefs don't matter. Uh, so that's why I have used the word othering, that they feel other because they feel that their own deities, their local beliefs uh, are cannot be reconciled with the belief systems are prevalent in the plains where, uh, you know, land areas uh, need to be exploited and uh, taken away for the resources that they have.